the living word would prophet Isaac prosper of the excellent beauty nation at the city of wonders. Praise God. Hallelujah. All right, let's turn our Bibles in the book of Isaiah chapter 59. 59. Isaiah 59. We will take it from verse 20. We'll take something small today, but so big. Sometimes we get here not because we want to, but because it's a principle in the realm of the spirit that he that strives for mastery must strive lovely because the rules of the game is if you're not there during the time of the training, you cannot go to play. And when you get to play, you cannot play in another man's number. And the time is thundered. I don't know if you're getting that. So, sometimes we just appear here for the for for the for the for, for the gift and for 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 the aspects that the Bible says wait on God. How else are you waiting on God? Here the Bible speaks even about a man called Simeon and then Anna that these two were well stricken in age, but they were waiting on God. When others thought that time was passed for the Messiah, they are 80, 84 years. You are not even 30. But you are tired. <laughs> you are tired. Yet the Bible says, in him was the Holy Ghost. And he was waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Bible says, when he received the young kid, he said, my eyes have seen salvation. Now let your servant depart in peace. When men desire to get out of this world, it is only when they have received some things in their hands. I'm not talking about a problem hitting you and saying, Lord, when, when will I die? Take me from... No, there is a better way to reach your destiny. You don't have to go through a cave like Moses and Joseph. You know, you don't have to be that way. There is a simple way prescribed for every believer. Strive to enter. The Bible says the narrow gate. But for us we have found the way. Deeper mysteries than just understanding what sin is. They are deeper mysteries. There are deeper things God has prepared for those who he loves. The Bible says what no eye has had but you've been hearing about sin. What no eye has seen but you've been seeing sin. What no, no man has perceived in his heart. And he says the things that God has prepared. He didn't prepare sin for you. He didn't prepare punishment for you. He didn't prepare hell for you. They are deeper things. So for us to spend 16 days to talk about sin, we have errored in the faith. Because even the preaching of sin is not faith. It's the law. Which law the Bible says before faith came. So with the coming of faith was the enactment of the New Testament which is orchestrated by the Spirit. So, so, so there are bigger things. There are really bigger things that we now need to look at. The Bible says, not laying again the repentance, you know, these dead works, that's the law, and then faith towards God, and then baptisms, doctrine of the Bible, and then he says something, eternal judgment and resurrection of the dead. He says, let us strive on, let us head on to perfection. There are bigger things. He writes to three categories of people. He says, I write to you and young men that you may know your sins are forgiven. Are we now sorted? Your sins are forgiven. I write unto you. Children. No, that's for the children actually. Your sins are forgiven. And then I write unto you young men because you've known their father from the beginning. I write unto you fathers. 
because the holy one is in you you see there the are different levels the stages of growth it is not just nepios brefos no there is a heos that the world is eagerly waiting for the manifestation of the sons of god and these are they that are led by the spirit and the leading of the spirit is not just saying okay let's go no the leading of the spirit primarily is by the word when you look at the word is it leading you somewhere it must lead you to Christ. Any preaching that jumps you out of Christ, run away from it. Because it's not the leading of the Spirit. Bible says in Acts, in the book of Matthew 4, that when Jesus returned, he returned in the power of the Holy Ghost. And number one, he led him to read the scripture. And even when he read the scripture, he identified the author and the manuscript. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel. Glory to God. If we don't prepare to preach and to receive, we'll end up preaching to heads of men and never transforming their lives. Because this word I'm talking about is life transforming. If you ever get to a moment whereby you have to be reminded and frequently reminded and called upon the things that directly impact you, then you were never a Christian. I'm talking about maturity things now. Let me say it again. Anything that God gave you does not help him. There was nothing in man that God needed. Including his righteousness. Man is righteousness. That now it had to take God and his righteousness to own you back. We were so messed up that there was nothing good in us. That's who Jesus became in Isaiah 53. There was nothing good to desire and to look of him. That's who he became. He became what we were. We, we, we were. And that qualified the meaning of atonement. And every time you get to a moment where you want to run away from life you think about that moment even this one we're still alive him now just imagine the things that you know now he is in you he is in you how much more will you yield yourself for the thing how much more glory to God of course, it's important to start that way. Isaiah 59, let's take from verse 20. The Redeemer will come to Zion. The Redeemer will come to Zion. And to those who turn from transgression in Jacob, says the Lord. 21, as for me, says the Lord. This is my covenant with them. My spirit who is upon you. And my words which I have put in your mouth. Shall not depart from your mouth. Nor from the mouth of your descendants. Nor from the mouth of your descendants descendants. Says the Lord. From this time and forever. Ezekiel 39. Ezekiel 39. This afternoon, the Lord impressed upon my heart that we should just understand what it means by the pouring of the Spirit. Pouring of the Spirit. The pouring of the Spirit is my title tonight. 
39 and verse number 19. The Bible says, if you take it from verse 28 actually, this is what it is. Then they shall know that I am the Lord their God who sent them into captivity but also brought them back to their land and left none of them captive any longer. 29. Let's read. And I will not hide my face from them anymore. What shall I do? Let's read. For I shall have in the New King James Version of the Bible says for I shall have I shall have power that is now in the past tense in the future. Because this had not happened yet because the time of the Messiah was drawing nigh. Daniel had just prophesied. Ezekiel is an exalic prophet. And so he had prophesied together with Daniel. And Daniel had prophesied so many years now to come for the Messiah to come. Are we together? And so he's prophesying in fulfillment. If prophesying in the past for the things that will happen. Because the Hebrew language is first written in the past and the present. It was never for the future. Isaiah writes in 53 and it tells us that he bore our iniquities and our transgressions. He was well stricken for our sake. And then he says by his stripes ye are. Now he's telling a congregation in the wilderness in the Old Testament. And it is saying, I wish you could get the things even. Praise God. And so when Peter comes and reads the same scripture, he said, wow, it happened. You were healed. You were healed. You were healed. I was healed. I was healed. On the cross, I was healed by the blood. I was healed by the stripes. I was healed. For every forgiveness come at the healing. I was healed. I was healed. I was healed. I have divine life. I have divine nature. La cradon ravasteve. Hallelujah. So he says, for that time I shall have poured my spirit. Look at that. For I shall have poured out my spirit on the house of Israel, says the Lord God. We have read Isaiah. We have read Ezekiel. Now let's read Joel again. In tandem, three prophets are going to confirm this. Are you ready? 27, the Bible says, then you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. Say amen. I am the Lord your God and there is none other. Say amen. My people shall never be put to shame. Say amen. 28, let's read. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit. All this is in the future. It shall come afterward. That is in the last days. Afterwards, last days is katos. In the last days. It is also the connotation for the word latter rains. And the glory of this church shall be greater than the former. Which means this is the latter. I wish I had some people here. I wish you were not feeling cold like some of you. That now you are hot in the spirit. To pour out means to get a jaw and put it until they spill over. I wish you understood that even. In the Old Testament, that's why now we use oil, symbolic of the Holy Ghost. You remember the 25, uh, Matthew 25, when it talks about the 10 virgins, five foolish, five wise. What happened to the wise? They kept their oil. And the Bible says, keep the fire burning. What keeps the fire burning is the oil. For your information, the word oil is the word anointing. Because the word chrisma is the word used to mean to smear. I don't know if you're getting that. Chrisma is the word anointing. He says, the spirit of the Lord is upon because he has anointed me. 
Anointed in that sense is the word charisma. And charisma means to power. I wish you got that now. I wish you could understand that in a minute. Can it sink for a moment? To, to pour means to shink. That means to pour until every part has touched it. It's to shink, not to sink, to shink. That's to pour. It shall come to pass afterwards that I will pour my spirit. This spirit is big that now we can only be explained as a drink. You only pour liquids. Doesn't it amaze you that when the, 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 the Lord Jesus mentions about the spirit of God, he mentions him as a river. And then you know the river is flowing and pouring out water and you don't get it exhausted. The time you grow up, you've always seen River Nile as long as there's Lake Victoria. And Lake Victoria is not getting full and it's not drying up. I wish I had some people. There is a river you close every time you're going home. Have you ever wondered why it's not dry? There is an outpouring on that channel. Will you become a better channel tonight? I pray for you in the name of Jesus. That you become the conduit of power. You become the channel of flow. You are the, the channel of the river in the name of Jesus. I tell you something, there is a stream coming from God. And it's looking for an ancient path to flow. And you are that part. Put your hands for Jesus. Listen, God is looking for a channel. He's looking for what? A channel for distribution. And that's why now the Holy Spirit is coming as pouring oil. As a drink. As a river. In John 7, 38 it says, for as the scripture has said, he that is thirsty, let him ask of the water. For out of your belly shall flow gushers. It's like water is kept somewhere. The moment you pierce it, bah! Raga. Have you been believing God for something? And the moment it comes, it's like every orifice is opening. And, and, and you can test to it. The pouring of the Spirit is real. It is akin to the feeling of the Spirit. Listen, you cannot talk about the pouring if you do not want to understand the feeling. Because you cannot feel without pouring. The feeling comes by the pouring. Ah. If I want this cup to be full, what will I do? I have to pour into the cup until the cup is full. So the understanding of the feeling, I hear God of Allah. The understanding of the feeling is akin to the word pouring. And in the Bible says, be ever filled with the spirit. Be ever be poured by the spirit. Oh, let me help you now. Let me help you. Let's read that Joel again. 2 in verse number 28. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit. Look at the tenses. I will do what? I will pour out my spirit. Spirit on all flesh. On what? All right. Just keep keep getting it. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Now you know how many people have really received the pouring of the Spirit. I know where your theology is ending you. You are thinking, no, the pouring happened. And I'm going to just mess up with the theology right now. To tell you that these guys were prophesying in the Old Testament. Now let's go to the book of Acts 2 and verse number 17 quickly. And then you understand. And how you can be humbled 
with your revelation and the spirit is still teaching somebody here i don't know who but i know i'm one of them here is paul peter rather standing up in a voice in verse 14 but peter standing up with the 11 raised his voice and said to them men of judea and all you who dwell in jerusalem let it be known to you and he he to my words verse 15 let's read for these are not drunk as you suppose what happened says it is just in the morning this is 9 o'clock in the morning verse 16 but this is or oh, this was all right uh, i told you i'm alone in this meeting Is still happening. Now, I know I know some people did at Pentecost. And you were not in Pentecost. And yet God is saying, I have new wine. La Rivos Tovaria Combra. This was. Huh? Come on, read in your version now. One, two, three, we go. Come on. So what did Joel say? We just read. Go back to 28. And then we see what. Hey, you guys. Are you the way I am? What did Joel say? Can someone read quickly? And it shall come to pass afterward. No. In the book of Joel. Read again. Mm. It shall come to pass afterward. No. You see? Is that what you're reading? I know where your mind is. Read verse 28. Afterward. That I will pour out my spirit. Look at what Peter says. In verse number, where are we? 17, right? So Peter is quoting Joel. And then he understands, you know what? This thing is no longer in the future. It is happening. And it shall come to pass in the last days, says God. That I will pour out my spirit. I will pour out my spirit. I will pour out of. Now the spirit is there. Ah. Ah. You see, when you read in the Bible, ensure you read in the context and also in the tense so that you don't miss out on what God is saying. The powering is happening. In Joel, Isaiah, Ezekiel, it was in the future. When will the spirit exactly start pouring upon men? And this one was not prophesying, is prophesying. This one was not speaking in tongues. I don't know if you're getting it. It's now doing it. It's out of the overflow. Out of the abundance of the spirit. And that's what he's doing. And that's what he's doing in these days. He that has an ear, let him hear what the spirit is saying to the churches. And he's doing that exactly. He wants men to see. He says he comes to a man who is full of carnality. He comes, sits upon him. And that man now can reason the spirit. I'll pour out on all flesh. And the man you thought was not going anywhere. Actually is filled of the spirit. And is prophesying. Lacradon Masova. Praveni tol variga sovla hate pideva. In the Old Testament, when you want to anoint somebody, you will either use a jar or something to do with an alabaster box or something like that. And then you're going to pour. This current kind of anointing where you just smear on men's faces is not what it was. For me to prove that you are anointed or you are anointed or ordained, we have to buy maybe 15 olianta. And then pour on a basin. 
and then use a cup and then do like this. Oh, I tell me some more, come here. Let's hold both hands. Let's pour on this man until the man is soaked. Abundance. It is too much and we are not seeing it flowing down. You're joking. That is not the Holy Ghost. For us to prove it's the Holy Spirit, we have to get a full jaw, like a drum. Not the thing, go and buy anointing oil. How much? One five. Eh, Holy Ghost, one five. What? what? One five. You have to get it in perspective now. You understand? That is one. Two, they would use a rum is on. A rums on, they will get the oil and then use the rums on. Now, for the rums on to be on you, it's kingly. Because on means authority. What anointing do you have? Is it for the on or for the person? Say, I have the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Put your hands for Jesus. Don't strive over ram's horns, goat's horns, cow's horns, bull's horns. Don't go and buy and call ahead. And then you want to get the horn and say, this is anointing oil. If I get you doing that, I'll pray for you. That that anointing will never work. Say amen. So, the Lord told me, tell my people, that pouring of the latter rain has come. Did you hear that? That pouring of the latter rain is come. And listen. That pouring of the latter rain is the righteousness of God. Hallelujah. Is that pouring of righteousness. That man now will understand the things in depth. The pouring out. We see a very clear similitude or resemblance from the woman Anna and Anna said Anna said something in the book of 1 Samuel 1 when he's meeting Elkanah and rather Eli, Eli. and Eli is saying you woman you are drunk like this why are you doing this to me why are you coming this every morning and then you are pacing around like you are you're mad and Anna said you have no idea Right now, there is no pouring of the Spirit from God, but I am pouring out my Spirit. I am full of grief and I'm dissatisfied about my living. I am tired of the mocking. So I am pouring out my Spirit. And what she meant by pouring out my Spirit is she was pouring out words. Words. Because the moment Samuel was born, the Bible said he began to prophesy in a song. And she said, today my own is exalted. The honor of my salvation is exalted. Because sometimes the anointing is not for ordinary things. In fact, it isn't for ordinary things. When you understand about the anointing, you purchase treasures and truths that cannot be stolen stolen from you. Those things will anchor you in the realm of possibility. I don't know if you understand that. Because the Bible says the anointing received teaches you all things. You have an action from on high and you know all things. And he says the all things are the truths. With the outpouring of the spirit or with the pouring of the spirit. When your spirit is full. That's what I'm trying to say. You begin to communicate truth. Truth. The power. Of being filled with the spirit. Is truth. Sometimes the body cannot contain. You begin to speak in a language. Which is not understood by men. You would switch to the tongues of angels. Acts 19. And verse number 1 tells us about Paul. And then he is going there in Corinth. Then he comes to Ephesus. In Ephesus he finds 12 disciples of John the Baptist. The Bible does tell us that because they knew the way of John. And he asked them, have you heard about the Holy Ghost? We have never heard if there be anything called the Holy Ghost. 
you call the Holy Ghost anything? It's like you said, there is something that told me this. Even respected men of God still call the Holy Ghost something. So something, something we have never, but at least you know there is something. But this one's never had anything. And Paul was shocked. You are in church and you don't know the Holy Ghost. He said, what is keeping you now here? He said, the baptism of John. Paul, Paul had a holy, holy, not holy anger, but he had a holy release. He just felt like, I have too much. The Bible says he told them that John surely said, he baptized them and told them that he should believe on whom he should come afterward. And they heard about it, the Bible said, when they heard about it, and Paul laid hands on them. Kaiusofa. They heard about it. The Holy Ghost came upon them. And the Bible says when Paul laid his hands on them. There was a pouring out. Not this thing I lay hands on you and you're still looking at me like this. There's no pouring there. I just know I'm pouring on an empty head. <laughs> Say I'm not the one. Liga sovrani sovana pada. Those days Paul would lay hands on a person. And straight away your tongues change. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. May it happen to you. You cannot just be in church and you know the thing is coming out from heaven. And you're thinking this man is exciting us this evening. And me I'm not seeing the excitement. I I, I from the wells of salvation. <laughs> the thing has sustained me. I am like pepper sometime that a wind can blow me. That's what the spirit is. Spirits are blown by the spirits. I can prove to you the Bible. First Corinthians 14 it says the spirit of a prophet is subject to another that is to be blown. Now one day it says in Isaiah 43 now that when the spirit blows upon men the grass with us. It is expected when you come to church and there is an outpouring of the spirit or the pouring of the spirit. In fact it's called the pouring of the spirit. Alright. Okay. Outpouring is still okay. Now you understand it's not from heaven. It is from here because the Holy Ghost that poured out from Paul was not from heaven that day. It was in Paul. All I have to do is to engage myself in the tune of the spirit and I get so full of him that wherever I go it will be the pouring. Not anything whereby let's, let's welcome the Holy Ghost. Where had he gone? Yanguano. Then you're singing better nange. You be with me. Shala <laughs> vragadila. But now vrahina ma. Talking about. God is taking us somewhere into deeper waters of the spirit. The Bible says launch unto the deep. For deep call it unto the deep. A man who needs a power. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes 11, I believe verse 3. It says if the rain if the cloud is full of the rain, what do they do? They empty, they pour. We can only say there is a downpour when it is heavy. Not these small, small species, not those ones, these small ones. We are talking about the real rain. You will see the rain of the Spirit. I said the rain of the Holy Ghost is going to be on you. I know I'm only talking to one person. The rain of the spirit is going to be on you. Because also the pouring of the spirit means the rain of the spirit. When the Holy Ghost rains upon you, you freeze physically. And your spirit is carried to a 
Yes, you can only say, I was carried in the spirit on the Lord's day. Are these things making sense to you? Or it is old wine? When new wine comes, it bursts the wine skins. There is a way it will distort your body and you will, you, you will not feel hungry anymore. Giving becomes your daily delicacy. You understand? Winning souls is at the center and pivotal in everything. You will not be reminded to come to church. You will just say, please, it's now you to remind people. My prayer is let God touch every man by the spirit. I quit struggling and percussing men and coercing them and sweet talking them and cheap talking them and then manipulating them and then giving them small kitty kudogo or bribing them. I don't gain anything. If it is the spirit, it is the spirit. If men come by the spirit, they will stay. If you coerce them to come, you have to coerce them to stay. If you bribe them to come, you have to bribe them to stay. May God help us. Lift up your right hand and say, Father, I receive the outpouring. Let it rain. Let it rain. Let it rain upon my life. Let it rain upon this ministry. Let it rain upon my family. In my job. In my workstation. In my career. In my prayer life. Whatever I see. Let there be the rain of the spirit. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Marabokobo sata lambradila. Manto kobo robo bobo bobo bobo. Razil every ino ompra antovon. Elambro dia copra dele. Raligo sobacta. Elabon terebro nonto maniva. Eblo pari do coma. Erivlonis te vasta zuvik savonda li. E prododi cabon de ligranos te vactaba. Elambra dio copa ligro vandolos te ve. We are believers in the latter rain. We are believers in the latter rain. We believe in the reign of the spirit. Alega bosta vandaliata. E brandoni vili monra de visto vakti li bondra di antokoma. E blano tombre in a mano cobra gedile bogomo sova. When the Holy Ghost reigns upon you, you will be soaked. You will be soaked in your house. It will come to singing a song and you are soaked in the spirit. It comes to praying and you are soaked in the spirit. You are arrested by the Holy Ghost. You are tied to that note of God. Ela prania kombra dile brega dugo suvakta ba rebe dile boko praktili. There are corrections you make when the Spirit of God reigns upon you. You make recommendations. You make adjustments to accommodate the move of God. Laria bon rade venostopa male brodia kapa de la rosta vanda. Bele brodia kapa rapa la patapa. Repela kombre il bako zuzovetava. Make adjustments, make room for the spirit to do some work in your life. Make adjustments right now. Be realigned for the better. Allah kode mena. Ela brano tobel vron tavila andro done. La rodia kopa. Ela rabon terevelo mokri in the vosto vale bedi. Mara poko toli frenetov. Ereflo pare di logobosta. By opening your mouth. You're opening to be filled. The Sabbath said, the Lord told me, open your mouth and I shall fill. With words of hope, with words of life, with words of destiny. Eraba kaba di lebrono kabo riga bada bala badesh. Rapa tala bada baba baba baba. Marapa tala bradi le kibondo. Repelata. Rakataya. Repetele brondo stabagda ba. Ela bradi akato bradi le bezo. Mantala baba baba baba. Repeka tala bada ba. Retoli virinanos. Valatore velambro onta baba ba. Pray the spirit. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. Stand on your feet. Make two, three moves. In the name of Jesus. Initiate the pouring. Initiate the flow. Right now, right there. 
Iso pratei da mole di fronte bala dei. E pradia kapa elara doni me sovra neta elara tado bori via tababaya. E rapali dono vesto vakto levrona tabla. E rapala kusa vala pata. Begin to declare rain upon your life, rain upon your family, rain for fruition, rain to wake up, rain of the spirit. La rata la bayata bababa. We are in the days of the Holy Ghost. If you were getting tired in something, if you are battered by something in life, let there be an awakening by the rain of the Spirit. La raba sapra kata, rapa kata la bababa, rapa pa 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 pa, rade lombre inda, elambro diga sovra gadesh, pala pa rapa kasata, repelata prodo, pa kasata. What happens when the Spirit rains on you? The Bible says the wilderness is turned into a fruitful field. A desert becomes a forest. Think about it. Think about it. When the pouring of the Spirit lands upon your business, when the pouring of the Spirit lands upon your life, every day at the endless capacity of visions you have, you begin to have countless journeys in the Spirit. You begin to see things. You begin to understand the Scripture in another dimension. You become receptive to correction because you know you're moving somewhere. There you will enjoy the chastening of the Lord because you know He's penetrating you. He knows. He knows what He's doing. They that are led by the Holy Ghost are the sons of God. They are the heroes. They are the mature ones. Adopted sons. Men with vision are men who entertain the pouring of the Spirit. Labra dia copra ida. If there can be two people, three people, four people who understand this mystery, you can be sure there will be a total turnaround in your life. You become the breadwinner in the city. You become the man of hope. You become the big man on the block. You become the anchor of mercy. You become the throne of grace. Ala pati ala bobo. Rapa la tala baragadona masavala. The Spirit cannot lead us to a dry land. When the Spirit begins to take over, when there is the pouring of the Holy Ghost, He leads you to fresh pasture. He guides you to feed from His table. He lara banostuba. Mantokobo rabakatish. Repekatole vrindono sapakata. Barra pakata le pradesh, matala parata le pregedile kopasata, barra pale kusava, repelata lando kobedile frenaton. Yes, shaka bada bala baba baya, elambro dia kopa, repelato prenigo soval, propel provik tapangaban. My God, my Father, the things you do, the things you do. The things you do, the things you do, shata la papa, repe kota liprade, ever stimulated by the spirit. The pouring is here. The pouring is here. As you pour out words, there is an infilling. As you pour out words, there is an infilling. There is an infilling. When you pour out words, there is an infilling. Rapa la bata baba baba. The men that speak more in the spirit are the men that are filled more. And the magnitude of your feeling is directly proportional to the amount of results and impact in your domain. I feel the Lord is raising kings. I feel the Lord is raising men. Men after the order of Melchizedek, king of righteousness, king of Salem. Rapa dei lo more di viga sovata ba. Rapa kata la bayata. Extent to which you drink of the Spirit is equivalent to the amount of expectation you have for the word that cometh in that season. Call unto me and I shall answer. It is for men who understand the dynamics of the Spirit pouring. When the Spirit takes the lead, it becomes a river. 
you become fresh you become fresh jalabariga bogozovata you are rubbing with grace you are rubbing with power you are rubbing with anointing elandro dio no makata nera dio no makato brede la parata la barabagadina manto robo bo 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 raba ba 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 ela predigo so barata le predegetosh and don't forget even rivers pass their banks that means beyond capacity the ideas which have landed in you by the rain of the spirit that now your thinking has been amplified after the day you think big after the day you see far after the day you will imagine big because there is a power to work in you and God is able to do it sitting like Bernard Lee because of that power generated because of that power in Lusudare because of that power coming out because of that outpouring by the Holy Ghost in I don't know where they been running for Holy Vilambo on the vina Shabara tele brado no boko sobala ba with the pouring of the spirit we can believe God for anything we can believe God for anything because once the river overflows no natural force no artificial barrier can hold it no physical man can stop you you want stop about you want stop about you are without limit no barrier no barricade no head run you marquis of la bedimana bala prodia cobra roba gozobata you were a drink under the lord you were a drink under the lord as you pour out your heart to god as you voice the things in your heart the intents of the heart orchestrated by the holy ghost as you pour them out the lord enjoys them the bible says the prayers of the saints are a sweet aroma before the father when god reaches there he begins to attest to it and he enjoys the outpouring the Lord enjoys what pours out of himself. In that Lord has put in you that he may listen, that he may hear, that he may smell, that he may take in the Bahuda. Allah badahu. In sombra dia kapa. The prophesy and to speak in tongues thou shall not forbid. Says the spirit of the living God. In Jesus name. Lift up your right hand. Both hands I declare and decree in the name of Jesus. That has started in your life. Whatever comes out of you shall not stop. Let it be visions. Let it be ideas. Let it be wisdom in the name of Jesus. Let me read for you something in Proverbs 1 verse number 23. Proverbs 1 23. Look at that for yourself. You've seen it right now in the realm of the spirit. The Lord told me this. I want to read for you this quickly, quickly, quickly. Then you will walk safely. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you, are you with me? Are you with me? Proverbs 1.23. If you're there, read with me quickly. Turn at my rebuke. That's at my correction. Surely, I will pour out my spirit on you and I will make my words known to you. I will make my words known to you. With the pouring of the spirit is the knowing of the words of God to you. I just said God shall make his words known to you. With the pouring of the spirit he says if you accept correction if I rebuke you and you heed to it, then I will pour my spirit. But we now understand it's the pouring out of the spirit. Then your spirit will begin to open up. In Amplified it says, then I wisdom will pour my spirit. And upon him shall be the spirit of wisdom, of understanding, of the fear of the Lord of cancer 
And that's the sevenfold Holy Ghost. Can you imagine there is what we call the sevenfold Holy Ghost and yet men are operating in one dimension. There are seven dimensions. They are only operating in the fear of the Lord. There is the spirit of wisdom that has come upon you. Yeah. Episcaiser has mounted you up. Lift up your hands. Seven old Holy Spirit. Seven dimensions. Because now you have received the correction of God. He has corrected us. He has rebuked us and we have received. He has made us see the way. Therefore shall we know the word of God. Your eyes are open to know the word. Your ears are open to hear the word. You will not bypass the correction of God. You will not bypass the instruction of God. You will know the Lord is speaking to you. You will know it is my time to rise. You will know it is my time to have this. You will know it is my time to pray. You will know it is my time to work out the righteousness of God. In the name of Jesus. And so shall it be. Say I receive. Say I receive. Every day I receive. In Jesus' name, put your hands for Jesus. Of course, verse 24, he talks about those who said, Because I have called you and you've refused, I have straight out my hand and no one regarded it. Because you disdained all my counsel, I will laugh at you. That's what he said. In the day of your calamity, I will laugh. God said, I will laugh at you. Wisdom, I will laugh at you. But because we have accepted him, because we have taken heed of the word, the spirit is alive. Prophet Isaac Prosper, changing lives around the world with the testimony of Jesus in powerful demonstrations of the Holy Spirit and a mighty prophetic, evangelistic, and teaching ministry. For more of this, Join us for service every Tuesday at 5 p.m. and every Sunday from 8 a.m. at the City of Wonders, opposite Reliance View Hotel, Maluku Mbale City. And find us on our media platforms on YouTube at Prophet Isaac Prosper and on Facebook at Prophet Prosper Isaac. Shalom.